um, you know, I'm happy to take that short trade. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take that short trade if we get a nice reaction, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, my, my I suppose I somewhat agree with you, though. Yes, it, of course, if we want to get a more extended move to the downside, we, of course, it's always, it's always preferable to grab higher liquidity first right so yeah that would also if we are looking for a very big move to the downside of course going up first is 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 favorable more favorable so i suppose i somewhat agree with this statement yes at the end of the day i'll trade trade the reaction How would I distinguish between a corrective B wave for a big ABC correction and the bottom in twos? Well, so yeah, generally speaking, the way that you would tell the difference between this is yes, you could of course look at volume and if that is a corrective B wave going up, then it would be on lower volume. The best way, though, to be looking at this would be on. So, obviously, if you're looking to hear a ABC flat, then you're looking at a three three five. So, whether that third wave in the B, what is is this like? Very obviously a flat. Um, in terms of its price action, because you can obviously get a flat flat impulse. So on the B wave, I'd be look. Yeah, I'd be looking at volume, but I'd be more focused on market structure. Does this look like more of a flat in the B? Does this look like obviously it's, if it's a zigzag? Zigzag is actually harder to dis harder to tell the difference between an impulse. Sometimes the only way you can tell the difference between a zigzag and an and, a, and an impulse is actually when the correction is finished, right? And you, for example, come back below wave two, then it confirmed it was a uh, correction. So sometimes. The difference between a zigzag and an impulse is difficult to tell the difference. Sometimes they do look the same, and it's only after the fact you can actually distinguish the difference. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, that B wave would be on lower volume, but market structure would be the best way to tell the difference. Again, if it's a zigzag, then it could just be very hard to tell the difference, and it is just very hard to tell the difference until that uh, has come below wave two, then you have your confirmation. Uh, what is the significance of the ETH BTC? Basically, I really recommend you watch my video because I've done a whole video on this um, explaining how to trade altcoins because this is fundamental of how to trade altcoins. So I honestly recommend you watch that video. But basically, ETH BTC is directly correlated to ETH. I'm just going to explain this in like one minute. So if Bitcoin moves 0% in the day, ETH BTC moves 1%, ETH USD will be moving 1%. If Bitcoin USD moves 1% up and ETH BTC moves 1% up, ETH USD will move 2% up. So this ETH BTC pair is, is uh, like aiding the USD pair in that regard, so like it's directly correlated. Daniel, but I recommend you go watch the Bitcoin string, because obviously I've done a whole hour of talking about this. <laughs> uh, Daniel, do you see any harmonic forming? I was actually looking at that earlier. I was like, I, although I didn't pull it out on my chart i currently know i'm not trading any harmonics and i don't really see a nice harmonic forming off of the symmetry that we have on current price action so i did think about that in my brain although you didn't actually see me doing it a lot of these tools i just do in my brain and if i don't see any point in doing it i'm not going to do it and yeah i did look for a harmonic and i think off of the symmetry that we have at the moment there was no nice harmonics for me and hi dan any particular reason you mark eth levels on coinbase and not bybit thanks and happy new year uh, two primary reasons for this. Um, point number one will be there's a lot more older data on Coinbase, and that's just historically what I've traded. Um, sorry, what I've used for charting. So you're absolutely right that, for example, this can be on Coinbase. But what you'll see here is I have data going all the way back to 2016. And this is just simply data that I don't have on Bybit, right? Because Bybit wasn't around in 2016. It was created in 2018. So, um, yeah, I basically have this USD chart, for example, because, you know, when I, when I first charted it, I wanted the older data. And I don't have that older data on Bybit. So that, that's really the same answer with all the altcoins. Um, so, you know, I only trade on, on Bybit. I'm not trading on any other exchanges. 
but my analysis for altcoins is generally done either on Binance or Coinbase um, because they've got more history. The levels themselves are extremely similar. So for example, right now, ETHUSD on Coinbase is trading at $1,217 and on um, Bybit is trading $1,218. So the difference is extremely minimal, extremely minimal. And um, yeah, I use the Coinbase chart, for example, because it has more history. Okay, If I really wanted to, to be honest, and I'm only day trading, then yeah, I could absolutely just add the Bybit chart on, on, on here because I'm only going to be trading off a of local data. And of course, Bybit has all that. But yeah, I've always just had either uh, the, these other exchanges on because of the, the price history. And I, I like to see that. And the difference of prices is very minimal indeed. But again, it really wouldn't hurt if I am now looking only at local price action and trading local price action that I add, for example, on the Bybit chart. But yeah, my main number one reason why I'm using, for example, here Coinbase is for the price history. Not, nothing more. That's the only reason. And the final question here is, hi, Dan, can you please shortly give us your thoughts on Dot Matum as you recently did those on stream? I'll end with this very briefly. I don't want to spend too much time talking about Dot and Atom um, because we are wrapping up. But basically, my yeah, my thoughts on Dot and, on, and Atom on the, well, we can look at this on the higher term time frame is overall, I still think that these are going to have legs down. Again, this is very dependent on ETH and Bitcoin. Let's say, for example, hypothetically speaking, that the bottom is in on Bitcoin and then simultaneously the bottom is in on ETH. Well, then I really think that this target is not going to be hitting in the at least in the short medium term. I think we can get very large rallies if the Bitcoin bottom is in and the ETH bottom is in. Well, then these targets are just simply not going to hit. It's as simple as that. OK, but here locally on these altcoins, they have sold off recently very hard. They are trying to reclaim some major levels. OK, so if that's the case, I do think there's going to be local rallies in store. So. On dot, basically, this target, I mean, if you watch the analysis that I done, then I spent, you know, a bit, a bit about the time looking for what, you know, confluence. And, um, yeah, this was the only level to the downside that I'm interested in. Basically, I'm, 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 let me give a quick backstory. So I've been holding uh, altcoin spot for the past few years, right? I've been building up spot positions. And I haven't bought altcoins like spot altcoins now for you know half a year being the last time since i bought dot for example or atom and during this time i've obviously been continuously making profit well it's not obvious but i've been very well trading uh bitcoin so before during the bull run i was making profits on bitcoin and i was just chucking it in altcoins like left right and center i just chuck it in altcoins because during 21 it literally was the case of put money in altcoins and make an extremely large amount of money so i was just as soon as I was making profits on Bitcoin, I was just putting that in altcoins and it was it was profits galore. Right. But obviously during 2022, that's not been the case. I've been making profits on Bitcoin and I've been moving it to Tether. So I'm in a fortunate position where I have a lot of Tether and I want to basically put it into altcoins again. And um, I didn't really want to just go into it at current prices. I'm happy to buy higher than where we are here. You know, I'm absolutely happy to put it in higher. Or, of course, obviously, always is preferably lower, right? But if we see a big sign of strength, I'm happy to just buy this higher. It's profits that I've made from Bitcoin. It's not new capital, really. But, um, yeah, so I've I, I done the analysis on DOT and I've done the analysis on, on Atom of deciphering, like, where would I like to deploy this capital? And Atom was actually a lot of a harder decision. It doesn't have this same really nice confluence, okay? But I've set some alerts where we could potentially get that. Atom, for me, was a lot harder because i think this is a lot stronger easier i don't really think we're going to get down here at the moment but we could do and if we do then i'll deploy my capital but on atom i was you know i'd done my analysis and i didn't really find some amazing level of confluence to be honest and that's sometimes the case sometimes the chart is just not clear you know i didn't really have a really nice setup on atom to be honest with you but dot yeah we found this really nice confluence around this target and that's where i'd be happy to deploy more capital to buy spot essentially not financial advice do your own research i'm not telling you what to do uh, this is just my opinion of something i might do right but i have some capital that i might use and i might buy around this target if we come down to it so that's kind of the thought process um expanded upon and give you a bit of context of why i done those altcoin stream and why i was looking for lower targets i'm not saying we're going to hit that target but that if i want to deploy uh would be 